Hello, I'm Father Louis Skirty with Friends of the Word, the Weekday Word, and my guest today once again is Joe Carlozzo. Welcome, Joe. Thank you, Father. Um, I want to say something about the music in the background that you hear at the beginning and end of the shows. This particular selection is from a, a group called the Uptown Flutes, and it would be the, the CD was given to us by Dr. Karen Dempsey, faculty member at William Patterson University Music Department. She'll be on subsequent shows, but I, I, when she gave me that tape, I said, oh, it's perfect for our, our shows, the intros. Thank you for coming back. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Fun. Okay. Um, previous shows, we talked about the process of applying for a nullity of, mm -hmm. of the sacrament of marriage, which you did and you received. Then... Subsequently, you fell in love again. Yes. And you married Betty. Yes. Betty. And and I love to call her Nurse Betty. That's correct. Because she's my favorite nurse. That's right. And then um, uh, we, we talked about what the experience of, of the, the family was. So let's pick up there. Uh, and I want to I use something from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, uh, what the sacrament of marriage and matrimony is all about. The matrimonial covenant by which a man and woman establish between themselves a partnership of the whole of life is by its nature ordered toward the good of the spouse and the procreation and education of offspring. This covenant between the baptized persons has been raised by Christ the Lord to the dignity of a sacrament. Mouthful, but basically succinctly says, the covenant of marriage brings a man and woman together so they can procreate and they can educate um, their children. And it, this particular section doesn't mention uh, fidelity and longevity, but of course the application of the sacrament is fidelity and, and complete consent of the will for the rest of your life. Right. And that's one of the phrases we always say, you know, for the, until death do us part. Okay, so you married Nurse Betty, right? Um, Two thousand six. What was your reaction? The reaction of your children? To, they were married. Uh, they were adult children at that point. Yeah. Right? Well, uh, the kids. It was some mixed feelings, you know. But uh, overall, we had a very positive response from the kids, and uh, we get together. We have like this blend now that's very interesting, and uh, it, it's challenging. I mean, it's not. We're not raising children together in a pretty sense, but right. we're sharing their lives in many yeah. ways, and grandchildren. And grandchildren, you'll be raising yeah, them. Yeah, Buddy right? has adult grandchildren almost, you know, and I'm going to have a new, we're going to have a new grandchild uh, from my former spouse, you know, his daughter, my daughter Monica, so that's exciting. Excellent. And, Excellent. Uh, you know, the you know it was, one, it was a funny thing. On the night that Betty and I uh, were married, uh, we, we were, after the rehearsal, we, had, we went to a hotel, and we're, we're sitting, we're all tired out and everything, and one of the things I said to her, I said, Betty, I said, we're married now. <laughs> I said, do you feel any different than you know, we've been together? <laughs> she said, yeah, I don't know. I said, you know what? I said, you know, we're family now. Yes, yes you know, interesting. Yeah, like uh, that was something. Yeah, the sacrament brings two yeah, families into it was one. A mystical, that's, it was that's like, kind of like a mystical kind of thing. But that's, then from that day, she's my, she was my family. Yes. Now yes, she's my family, yes. you know. And, that's important. You and know? your children refer to her by name? Or yeah, Betty, yeah. Betty, yeah, okay. Yeah. And they wouldn't call her Nurse Betty. No, no, they wouldn't call her. You know, no, they, they, they like her a lot. Okay, you, <laughs> you went through the process, and, and you were, you said this very succinctly at the last episode, uh, the, the church was stuck with me. I wasn't yeah. going to leave the church because right. I, I divorced right. my wife. Right. So you went through the process, and you learned a lot about yourself and yeah. the church and right. marriage. Yeah. Share some of that. Well, when you start to investigate some of these things and you start to see, like, about the sacrament of matrimony and what it really is, you know, you learn. And unfortunately for me, in my case, I was so much younger, you know, and, well, okay, that's how it worked out for me. Yeah. But uh, when you really learn about what the church teaches, it's not so bad in terms of they're not really asking us a lot, to do a lot. It's hard work, but uh, the beauty of it is that you have such a bond, you know, and, uh, it, it, you know, I learned that with my marriage now with Betty, we, we, we really work hard at trying to help each other, mm. you mm. know, and that for us, we, we don't have children, you know, from our union, but we have older children and we try to be there, you know, for them if we can and do what we can. And so I think as a witness, you know, I think if we witness to them how happy we are, 
Okay. I think I think that's a better almost evangelical tool than anything else we could do. You so know? it was a right choice to go forward in this and yeah. you maintain your Catholic identity. Absolutely. Um, you're members of what parish? Uh, Our Lady of the Magnificat in Tinola, New Jersey. Yeah. So, so your role is, is such a, a witness to people yeah. that it can happen. Yeah. And and you're very, how can I say, religious? I mean, you're very spiritual. Yeah, I mean, I try. I'm here down to earth, and we all... Yeah, you know, uh, I try to live my faith as best I can, you know, and that's really it. It's a struggle. Like, we all struggle. It's a big deal, you know. And when I said, like, oh, the, the church is stuck with me, I didn't mean that, like, in a... No, that's good. Yeah, that's good. You know, but this well, was my church. Here you know, I am, you, you know. You that's how I felt about it. You, you spoke know? about Betty the night of the wedding saying we're family. Yeah. And that's what the church is. It's a family. Exactly. And, you know? and if, if we make that mistake of thinking that we do something wrong, we're outside the church. Right. No, big mistake. Right. A lot of people feel that way, too. And I've spoken to many Catholic people that have been divorced. They said, oh, well, I'm divorced and I can't go. I said, well, are you remarried? Or, mm-hmm. you know, that's one of them. No, I'm not. I said, well, you're perfectly welcome. Any priest will tell you that. Go talk to to talk to your pastor. Exactly. Them, you know? The concept of um, the word excommunication, excommunio, yeah. outside the communion, well, yeah. uh, is, is harsh. It, it's so medieval in so many ways. Yeah. It's real. It's yeah. real. Yeah. But a person really has to want to be outside the church. Yeah. And, that, and that's important. Right. The choice. I'm not doing what the church is all about. Right. And I don't mean one little segment of the church. We're right. not perfect. We're right. mm-hmm. what, what the church is all about, the, right. the, 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 the bond of communion that, that Christ gave us with the Father and Son, gave us and asked us to live with other people. Right. And now we're focusing on the sacrament of marriage and that bond. Um, what significant aspects of, of marriage do you think uh, come out in your life now that you've been married? How many years? Six, uh, eight years. Eight years. Wow. What kind of change? I'm, you know, i got to take the garbage out, and, uh, you know, we got all certain things you got to do, you know what I mean? It's the practical things, but it's... You know, I'm the marriage and family therapy. Yeah, right. So I, I mean, I'm going to quote you. I'm yeah. going to quote you a lot. Things yeah. have changed. i got to take out the garbage. Yeah. yeah. I always tell a lot of single guys when I meet the young guys at work, I tell them, listen, you want to do something really smart, vacuum without supposed to having your wife tell you, you're going to be great, and believe me, I may sound funny, but it's really trying to live each day as best you can the other person, which is not, and I don't say I do that every day, believe me. No, 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 that's not you, but leave it for the other person. Yeah, yeah. Go, go with that. I was told once that the definition of love with, with a partner is uh, nurturing that person spiritually, physically, and emotionally. Yeah. You know, and then, uh, what wow. I'm not able to, well, I, I'm not, I'm not too, uh, touchy feel. I hear a lot of guys, I'm not too touchy feel. You know, you feel an emotion, but, yeah, then you gotta try and maybe I should listen better, to be attentive, um, to what your spouse is telling you, and try to help them, you know, understand that, but, you know, empathy, you know, it's really important. I like to tell a couple that, um, one of the signs of a good marriage is that we grow together, together. Yeah. So, it's like this. I like to help me. I like to help me. We are all together. It's a team. But we're going to be together. Let's be together. We are. We are. It's an idea. It's a high idea. But we're going to make it.